Welcome to the Frederica Academy Knights Coaches Show with head coach Brandon Derrick. Brought to you by St. Simon Seafood, Jenkins Nissan, The Emerald Princess, Apple Care Immediate Care, Misty's Element Massage, and by Catch 228. Now here is the voice of the Frederica Academy Knights, John Wetzler. Welcome to the Frederica Academy Coaches Show with head coach Brandon Derrick on the Bishop Media Sports Network. I'm Jason Bishop on location here at Catch 228 in Redfern Village where we will be each and every week on Thursday night, 6.30 for the entirety of the season. This segment of the Brandon Derrick Show is sponsored by the Emerald Princess, St. Simon Seafood, Misty's Element Massage, Jenkins Nissan, Apple Care Immediate Care, and by our host, Catch 228. And now, joining us, the head coach of the Frederica Academy Knights, Brandon Derrick. I'm glad to be here. Uh, hope everybody else has had a fun-filled day. I think the McGladry, the big tournament's going on. Everybody's been out and about all over the island having a good time. So uh, the kids have been all volunteering. We finally got them all rustled in practice at about 4 o'clock. So it was, it was good. It was a good day for us. Well, Coach, let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Last week, you traveled up to Statesboro, played a very tough Bullock Academy team, and the results were the results. Talk a little bit about that game and coming out on the short end. Uh, well, we, we missed opportunities is what happened. Um, right off the bat, we run the kickoff down to their 28. One play later, we're down at 16, and then they jump off sides, throw an elbow, we get called for personal foul. Um, so we should have been inside going for seven. We end up kicked three, uh, and then they score. We get back down there again, miss another field goal, but the field goal kicker gets depleted, but the referee apparently wasn't watching, so we don't get a penalty on that. But, uh, you know, we leave, and then we miss the field goal right before half. Uh, we missed two tackles on third down. We got a pass, a pass interference penalty called on us on third down and 14, and then it continued to drive for them. Um, so, you know, with penalties and, you know, a couple things, leaving points on the field, it could have been a little bit different football game. And, you know, it, it's tough morale-wise to keep, to keep pushing along. You know, we got – at the 23 kids we talk about every week, and they just continue to battle. And they they did they played as hard as they could go. Uh, you know when you get put behind the eight ball and a couple things bad go happen or a couple things bad happen, the kids kind of lose a little energy and uh, you know lose a little focus at times, get a little discouraged. So you know it, it's tough, but uh, they've done a great job so far, and they continue to battle week in and week out, and they've had a pretty good week of practice actually. Coach, that's a perfect segue. I was going to ask you this question anyway, so I'll just ask it to you a little bit earlier than what I planned. You're, when you're dealing with 15, 16, 17, 18-year-old kids, and you're going through a rebuilding season as you are doing, and you've, 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 when you have as frustrating of a year when there are several games that you could have won and you didn't, and you're dealing with teenage boys, it is amazing to me that you haven't had one single kid on your team call it quits and take it to the house. Everyone has stuck around for the whole season. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, that's the commitment. Uh, the kids, we make them be committed in the off season, and I often say this, and I say it to everybody, those who invest for the long term, they're going to be there for a long time. They understand what it is. It's just like putting money into an investment over and over. They're going to expect the draw on it. And these kids, these kids do that. You know, I, I said it. Last week, say it again, we're one of those teams that, one of the only teams at Frederica that makes the kids be in the weight room year-round. We're, we're lifting weights uh, in the summer. They're up there at 7 in the morning working out uh, four days a week, you know, and then in July, if they go on vacation and have to make it up, they could be there five days a week. So, you know, they're committed to it. And, uh, you know, we knew going up, moving up two classifications was going to be a challenge. Uh, and... To be honest, they've accepted the challenge. Like I said, we've been in two to three games where we've had a chance to win at the end. We just haven't been able to jump that hurdle. Um, and it's kind of those growing pains. you got to kind of figure it out. And, you know, that, this core of kids, this group of kids right now, my middle school kids and my upper school kids, that's the core we depend on. Those guys are going to be there. They've been there. Uh, we came in last year, so that seventh grade group that's now eighth graders and, and these guys that have moved up with us, they understand it, uh, what we're trying to get accomplished with our upper school program. And right now, I 
can't say anything good things about them. They give me their, they give me all the effort they got. They got a good attitude about it. So like you said, I've not had anybody quit. And guys, when you're two and six, a lot of people will turn it in and go home. These kids just come back on out there the next. They come back out on Monday and go, Coach, we're gonna get better. And I've even had some of them come up to me and apologize. You know, they wish we were doing better. And that's, you know, and I tell them, you don't have to, you don't have to apologize to me, son. Just keep playing hard and give me everything you got, and uh, it, it'll change. And and they keep working hard. I expect big things from them in the future. You know, we're we're battling through it right now. And hey, I feel like we can win this Friday night and get our get, we give ourselves a chance to get the playoffs right off the bat. Right, I, I was going to mention that, but first, this is the Frederick Academy Coaches Show with head coach Brandon Derrick on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Before we get into talking about this upcoming game and the opportunity to get in the playoffs, I kind of want to stick with what we're talking about, about uh, the leadership from your kids. You mentioned the lower school. How much of an example do you think these kids are setting at the upper school for the kids at the lower school by the fact they're sticking in and they're, and they're giving you such a huge commitment? Well, we ask it from our middle school kids at an early age, too. Um, these guys are in the weight room with us. We got six, seventh, and eighth graders that come in all summer long too at seven in the morning. So they're right there standing beside those upper school kids. So they don't see any difference. Um, they just, after a while, about three or four years in, everybody is just going to be the culture. This is what we do. This is how we get good. This is why we do it. Um, and that, they've been there. These, I think of our all of our middle school kids. We had 22 of them, and I think we may have had two that didn't make all the workouts out of 22 kids, and that's 6th and 7th graders and 8th graders. Uh, that's that's pretty remarkable to be getting up. And, and that's remarkable. It's a compliment to the parents who get up because those 6th, 7th, and 8th graders, they can't drive. They have to be there at 7 in the morning, and their parents are bringing them and dropping them off and picking them up. And, you know, that that's a commitment, not only by the kids but the parents. And, uh, you know, so they, they don't know any different. These young ones don't. And now I'm starting to see it in that fourth and fifth graders that are running around. They all have footballs in their hand at, at break. And if they don't, I go take the soccer balls away from them and give them a football. <laughs> so um, I make sure that they got one out there. And uh, most of the time I don't have to. I'm just joking about the soccer balls. But they go out there and, and uh, they're out there with footballs all the time. Every time I see the little ones in PE, we're in there playing something. We're high-fiving them. You know, we try to make it a commitment as a coaching staff to be visible for those younger kids, too, in the lower, lower school, below, below the middle school. And, you know, we're constantly monitoring them. Today, I was part English teacher slash football coach slash social studies. Today, I've had kids in my room writing papers that they apparently didn't do for English, so they were working with me today. And then I've had some that were being a little disrespectful, so they had to come and write long papers to apologize to the teacher so we've been doing a few things that that we do so they know that we're there and we're going to monitor them but we love them uh, and that's what I want the kids to realize is we're not in it for us or anything we're in it to make them better men um, and, and better characters down the road and, and to go out there and succeed in life and right now I think they've got that message that we love them every day we're going to try to push them and make them better Coach Brandon Derrick, football coach, disciplinarian and mole cricket hunter <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> We'll be right back. You're listening to the Coach Brandon Derrick Show on the Bishop Media Sports Network. The Emerald Princess Casino is celebrating 25 years with a special $25 gift for you. Wow, 25 years. Celebrate with this special $25 offer on our Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday evening cruises now through December. Limited one dollars value offer per person per cruise. Call for details. For reservations, call 800-842-0115 or visit emeraldprincesscasino.com. Call for offer limitations. Must be 18 years of age and present a government-issued photo ID to board. I'm Jenkins Nissan. 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 I am Jenkins Nissan. I'm Donnie Jenkins. We're all Jenkins Nissan, and together we want to show you just how easy buying and servicing your car should be. So please, stop by and experience the Jenkins Nissan difference. Look for the red and white Nissan tent at the corner of Chapel Crossing Road and the Spur, or visit us online at JenkinsNissanOfBrunswick.com. Get affordable health care when you need it. At AppleCare Immediate Care, our team of compassionate health care providers is dedicated to treating each patient with the highest standard in health care. Located at 1111 Glencoe Parkway, Apple Care is open Monday through Friday, 7.30 a.m. to 7.30 p.m., Saturday, 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m., and Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. 
Apple Care welcomes all walk-ins from pediatric to adult ages and accepts most insurance plans. Visit us at AppleCareDoctors.com and like us on Facebook. Welcome back to the Frederica Academy Coaches Show with head coach Brandon Derrick on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Jason Bishop on location from Catch 228 in Redfern Village on St. Simons. This segment is brought to you by the Emerald Princess, Apple Care Immediate Care, and by Jenkins Nissan. So, Coach, we were talking a little bit uh, before the before we got on the air about playoffs. We're we're still in position to where if we can pull out a game Friday night, we're going to end up making the playoffs, right? Yes, we'll get in as the fourth seed, but hey. Just want to get in. That's the goal is to get in. And if we win Friday night, we have that opportunity to get in. And, uh, you know, it's going to be a good game. I feel like we have a very good chance of winning the game. We just got to go out and have a great attitude and good effort and go execute. And our kids, if, you know, it's like I said earlier to you, if they want to win, they got the ability to. They go out there and win this football game. We're at home um, on a huge crowd. I'd like for us to have as many people as we could out and get everybody excited, you know, and support these kids. The game's going to be against Burke County, who is winless on the year, Coach. What do you expect to see from Burke County, and what do you need to do to win that football game? Well, Burke's very solid on defense. Uh, they have a really good linebacker, pretty good defensive tackle. And then everywhere else, they just kind of compliment themselves. They don't do anything really to get them, themselves beat on defense much. You have to drive the ball. They don't give up a lot of big plays. Um, and on offense, they're pretty much a wishbone run downhill type team they're not going they're not going to do anything you know fancy in the spread or anything i say that and they've had two weeks prepared they'll probably come out and empty backfield or something but uh you know if they do we're prepared for it we've been over it we talked about something tricky or anything like that formation wise already this week uh you know we just got to go out and take care of our business special teams we've at times we've had the edge of we you know at times, we've given it away in some things. We're not, not converting on field goals, but most of the time, we had the edge in special teams with our kicking game and being able to get field position. Um, so we got to do that on Friday night. Big thing, defensively, we just got to be in our position to make tackles. We've got to gain tackle. We can't arm tackle. Um, you know, last week, we gave up a couple big runs because we weren't in position and we didn't pursue right down the line. Offensively, we just got to keep doing what we're doing. We had, we've had 300 yards the last two games. But it wouldn't look like it when you only get 14 to 24 points. But we're averaging almost 300 yards a game, uh, and we just can't turn the ball over. Pinewood would turn the ball over four times. Can't turn the ball over to good teams. And, uh, we don't turn the ball over. We'll put ourselves a good chance to win the game. You're listening to the Coach Brandon Derrick Show on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Coach, talk about maybe some advantages that you think that you might be able to have against Burke County, some advantages. Uh, maybe some things you can exploit against them to your advantage. Well, we're going to try to get to the corner um, a little more than usual. Most of the time we line up with the power running game and run up inside the tackles a little bit, but uh, probably be a little bit more corner. Get there early. You might see a lot of chicanery, as somebody says earlier week. We're going to, you're going to do, do a few things that we haven't seen before, and uh, we've got a few tricks up our sleeve. Um, we're going to go out and try to exploit them a little bit in the secondary throw the ball a little, very conservatively. Um, Nick did a good job last weekend, not trying to force anything. He executed real well, so we're going to try to get to that, get in the flats, get in the curl area. Um, you know, defensively, we just got to use our size and our speed at times. Um, keep people off Brandon Blake, let him run from side to side and make tackles. He had 14 tackles last game and four assists. You know, um, just got to keep them off of him and let him get there and make plays. And, if we can do that and not give up a big play, make them drive it because they have a tendency to turn the ball over. I think we have a shot to uh, take care of business and win the game. Now, Burke County is winless in the region to this point. Yes. Is, is that indicative of what kind of football team they have? Or are they much like Frederica where they've been in a bunch of games and they're better than what people think they are? We're, we're a carbon copy. Um, and I've said that about all of our these teams and it's whoever makes the least mistakes ends up winning and Burke's made mistakes and they've gotten beat and we've made mistakes and gotten beat you know the uh, so you know they're they're as good as we are we're pretty equal you know and I've said that about Bullock and everybody else but uh, Burke's probably closer to us because I think they only have 27 kids you know everybody else we faced in the region had at least 35 
36. I think one's got 40. You know, so um, when it comes to numbers, they're as close as we are right now as being number-wise, uh, 27, and we got 23. So depth's going to be an issue for them like it has been with everybody else. Um, you know, so I think that uh, for us, their record of not winning in the region is about the same as what we are right now. They've had their opportunities to win some games. They just, they're, they're like us. They can't get over it. They can't jump that hurdle. And if memory serves me correctly, they they played everybody in the region to this point except for you and Pinewood. Am I wrong? It's uh, us and Trinity. Okay. Yeah. So as far as common opponents, what what have you seen from the folks that they played that you guys have played? Well, they haven't scored in the region. That's, that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. But all of our point differentials have been about exactly the same, which sounds weird. Uh, I think we played Pinewood, it was 45-14, and they lost Pinewood 26 to nothing. So if, am I my right, is that 31 and 26? And then um, they played Bullock, got beat 21 to nothing, and we lost to Bullock 45-24, so it was 21. You know, 21 point difference, so it's about the same. Um, but when you get to looking at that, um, you know, that doesn't really tell what the game's going to be, you know, in some of those games, the other teams could have scored a few more times, and they could have scored a couple times too. But uh, And same thing for us. Um, you know, so I feel like going into it, that it's a pretty equal game, both sides. But I think our special teams um, and our offense might be, we might have an advantage on the special teams and offense. What has been the morale in practice this week, getting ready for this game of the kids? Well, you know, I, I went out, I talked to them Monday, and I said, listen, we got to go hard. Um, as in play, you know, get in. This is it because you never know if you're ever going to get another opportunity to get in the playoffs. Um, and the kids have actually responded. I, I was surprised. I, you know, we, we played so hard against Trinity two games ago that I think that we've had that that lag, uh, you know, in confidence we sold out in that game. But I don't know if anything goes wrong here lately. In the last two games we kind of, oh, no, here we go again, kind of attitude. Um, and I think this week – practice-wise, was really good, um, offensively and defensively. Yesterday might have been one of our best practices all year, just getting lined up, executing, knowing what to do, seeing the formations. Um, you know, it's difficult. Our game is a little bit difficult because defensively we're going to set our fronts and our secondary up to whatever formation they do. We don't call something and just line up. And uh, we, we're going to – I pretty much let our linebackers – make the checks and the secondary make the checks and we, we set our coverages and our fronts up to what the team does and so defensively we're a little bit different than everybody else offensively you know I thought we looked really good today in our walkthroughs which was shocking because um, we usually are not very focused sometimes but today offensively I thought it was really good last time I said that we didn't play real good but knock on wood that we will but I think the kids have come out here focused this week and done a good job and and uh, they give good effort. You know, we're beat up. This is the tenth straight week we've been playing and practicing. Well, great. Well, we're going to take a short break, let our sponsors say what they need to say to you, and then on the other side, we'll get back to the Brandon Derrick Show on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Relax. Misty's Ella Massage specializes in helping you do just that. Located at 138 Village Market on St. Simons Island, Misty's Element Massage offers deep tissue massages, therapeutic massages, scrubs, creams, body wraps, and much more. The perfect gift for that special someone, not to mention sports massages for that aching muscle. Schedule your appointment today at 912-224-0198 or on the web at mistyselement.com. Fresh local seafood on St. Simons Island, St. Simons Seafood, located at 2463 Dimery Road, in the shops at Dimery Plaza next to Locos has everything a seafood lover could want. Wild Georgia shrimp, crab cakes, flounder, you name it, and St. Simon Seafood has it. Seafood so fresh, it was swimming this morning. So stop into St. Simon Seafood and check them out on Facebook. St. Simon Seafood, the island's only fresh seafood market. Catch 228 in Redfern Village on St. Simons Island is your home for the best seafood around. Oysters, shrimp, fish, you name it. Not to mention your island home for NFL Sunday ticket, Major League Baseball extra innings, college game day, and so much more. Catch 228 is also your home for the Frederica Academy Coaches Show, 
with head coach Brandon Derrick and a proud Frederica Academy supporter. So stop on in any night of the week for the best time on St. Simons and find us on Facebook. Go Knights! Welcome back to the Brandon Derrick Show on the Bishop Media Sports Network. I'm Jason Bishop on location at Catch 228 in Redfern Village on St. Simons. This segment is brought to you by Misty's Element Massage and by St. Simons Seafood. Coach, a very short time, Frederica football has been in existence. And in that short time, there has been almost, I want to say, a, we'll call it a tradition of winning already. The first year of, of actual existence where everything was documented, you win a, Frederica wins a state championship. The next year, Frederica comes in and goes to the state semifinals. Now in year three, Frederica again has an opportunity to make the playoffs. So three years of existence and a possibility of three years worth of playoff appearances. Talk a little bit about that. That's impressive. Well, it is. It's a commitment, you know, from the kids. And we talked about that. Don't be the class that, you know, be that, be that class to carry on that tradition. You know, don't, let's not go out that way. Uh, you know, of course, our circumstances are a lot different than they were when they started it. Uh, we've jumped up two classifications, and it's been a lot a lot more difficult this year. Um, but I still think that we have the possibility of getting in. I think we have a great chance tomorrow night to win uh, and put ourselves in the playoffs. And, again, it would just continue to carry on. And that's kind of what I want to do. Let's just... Give ourselves a chance to get in the playoffs because you never know once you get in. Ball bounces funny ways, and you can make a couple things happen. Next thing you know, you're in the second round of the playoffs. And then you might be in the third round. And then the last one, you could be standing at Mercer. You just got to get in. Once you get in the playoffs, the records go out the door. It don't matter if you're 10-0, 9-1, or 4-6. and six. Um, They go to 0-0. Zero and zero. And, uh, you know, personal experience, I know. Talk a little bit about how the regions would line up. Of course, you know, ma making the, the assumption that Frederica, of course, will, will get in, which I think we all hope, and I'm confident they will. But talk about how the playoff alignments w would shake out as far as who would play who. Uh, we would go back in with uh, Deerfield, Windsor, Valwood, Brookwood. That, that group over there got some faces there and looked at me, oof. Um, we've already competed against Valwood, so we know what they're capable of doing. And uh, Deerfield Windsor, we're not sure who would be the one seed out of there or not. Um, so it'd be one of those waiting games. We just have to wait and see what's going to happen from there. But that's who we would cross over and play. Um, you know, like I said, we've seen Valwood. They're, they're a very good football team. And for a half, we played about as good as we've played in a long time. We just got to do that for two halves. Yeah, Coach, that's, that's actually a question I wanted to ask you. Getting into the playoffs and, and you've competed against the Val Woods and the Pine Woods and the Robert Toombses of the world. So once you get into the playoffs, going forward, and, and especially, like you mentioned, in the first half, you guys are always competitive. And then I think when you get in the second half because you're playing so few kids, they get worn down. What, what would be some adjustments going into the playoffs that you might try to – maybe counteract that where you wouldn't be as worn down later in the game against somebody like a Valwood? What we've done in practice is I have <laughs> – it's a massive rotation in practice, rolling defensive tackles, DNs, linebackers. You know, uh, we, we're rolling people in and out continuously in practice to get reps. You know, I, I yell first D, but most of the time – Four plays later, I got a whole defensive front. Seven guys come in. So we're trying to get these kids to know as much as they can and, and, and go in and spell these starters and give them a couple series off to where they can go back in. And Right now it's just the, the longevity. One, it's just trying to save their legs. You know, we kind of cut back a little bit on the conditioning, not running as much right now as I'm, I'm used to doing. And, uh, you know, we've cut back on that just to save legs and hopefully we'll be able to continue down, down that road and, and uh, be competitive. But, you know, thing is, we've got to make some breaks in the second half, and I think that that would be the key. You're listening to the Coach Brandon Derrick Show on the Bishop Media Sports Network. Well, Coach, let's talk about a little bit as far as where you are with, with your team, not, not necessarily record-wise, but where you are as a coach and what you see with what you've had to play with are you satisfied? Do you, do, you th do you think there's a little bit room for 
some more improvement with your kids? Where, where are you with, with your program and your kids? Well, you know, um, irony uh, of all of it um, was early in the season, we went to camp. We went over to Tombs to camp, and we went over there and just got beat on. Um, but as we were there, I said, you know, a lot of it's going to depend on our athletes. And when I say that, they can stay healthy because we have limited skill kids. Um, you know, and I, and I made the comment, which now I wish I hadn't. I said, you know, if Tyree stays healthy, we're probably five and five or six and four. If Tyree gets hurt, we may be two and eight or three and seven. And, you know, as a, being somebody that can assess skill and ability, you know, we're about where I thought we would be. I've seen our kids fight and battle, and, but, you know, as a program, we've made some huge strides. Uh, you know, you don't come in and change the culture overnight. you got to do that gradually. And, I, and I, like I said, I'm beginning to see it make huge strides. You know, like I said, we've had 23 kids from the beginning of the season. And 23 right now. Uh, you know, they, no one's walked off the field. No one said, hey, I can't take it anymore. No one's quit. Uh, you know, they go to weight training every day during school. During, you know, and so they've made a commitment to get better, and, and our program is making those steps. And, and we're going to continue to do that. We're going to continue to push the kids. You know, it is a tough environment. Not, it's not really an environment, but educational-wise, Frederick has got great academic standards. And so it's a tough situation for kids to be able to prioritize football and academics, social life, all this stuff as a teenager. And our kids do an outstanding job of doing that on a daily basis. Um, because, you know, it's like I said last week, we're going we gonna to guarantee you go to college. We're the only school in the county that does that. We're going to get you into school. You're, you're going to go. Um, we have 40 kids graduate last year, and 40 went to college. And if the stats prove me right, 88% of those kids will graduate in four years. The state average in Georgia is 31%. So it's so like I tell people now, you can invest now and reap the rewards later or vice versa. And uh, so, you know, our kids have a lot to do. They have a lot of pressure academically and athletically, you know. So to them, it, it's a constant battle every day, and they do a great job of handling it. And as a coaching staff, we try to handle it as best we can. Uh, and, and my coaches, and I say that as our coaching staff, does a great job of working with the kids and uh, getting them prepared every week, not just for football, but for life down the road. And, and that's our commitment in our program, is to build men with character. You know, wins and losses will come and go. They'll look at my record and they'll say, well, he's either good and bad if I'm going to be judged on my wins and losses, but if I've got 25 kids that go through the program and they all go to college and they come back and they're successful down the road, then I've done a good job. Definitely a lot to be said for that. Well, listen, that's going to wrap it up for us. So Friday night, big game. Right here on St. Simons, the Frederick Academy Knights will host Bullock Academy, and and I'm I'm actually gonna deem it like I'm I'm gonna coin the phrase <laughs> in the bloody marsh on St. Simons Island. That is the new nickname of your home stadium, according to Jason Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we wanna we wanna thank everybody for coming out and joining us. Thank you for all the Frederick fans for coming out, and we certainly hope to see you tomorrow night in that huge huge game. Remember, it's the, there's a playoff spot on the line, so. Head to the McGladry Classic, enjoy yourself, get done, recoup, get out to St. Simons, get out to Frederica, and come support your Knights. I'm Jason Bishop for the head coach of the Frederica Academy Knights, Brandon Derrick, on the Bishop Media Sports Network, signing off.